Hello guys and gals and welcome! So I'm gonna finish off the quarry today. I've been working on this game for a little while. It's got quite a few chapters to it and, uh, and I want to get it finished today. So we're gonna be knocking out chapters 10, 11, and 12 um, and hopefully finishing the game. I do believe there's an epilogue that goes over the, uh, the end of the game. For those of you guys and gals who may not have seen the previous episodes, um, let me stay the say that the, all the previous episodes are up there. If you check in the description, they're all down there. So if you want to watch from the beginning, it's all all up there, um, and you can uh, you can watch this one later when it's, uh, it goes up live or goes up uh, you know as a video. Um, for those of you who don't want to watch the rest of it, let me give you a quick recap on what is going on. Uh, this is going to be spoilers, obviously. So if you don't want spoilers, don't listen. Um, so, so far in the story, what has happened is we have a, a very interesting place called Hackett's Quarry. Um, Hackett's Quarry is a old quarry. It's not a quarry anymore. Uh, it has been converted into a uh, summer camp for kids. And um, every year it seems like they do this summer camp. And uh, it looks like they invite counselors to come, which are basically uh, just kind of like, you know, like teenagers, uh, you know, 18, 19, maybe even 20 years old. Uh, sometimes I'm not really sure exactly how old they are, but they seem like they're not, you know, like the, the oldest of people. Uh, more, more in their, their early years. And um, the uh, the very interesting thing about this is that um, they come to the quarry. Um, it seems like it's a regular summer camp. Um, one of the the counselors, I guess you would call him, uh, decides he's going to sabotage the truck and he's going to make it so that um, you know they can't leave. Well, apparently it's very important that they leave because the full moon is the following day, and uh, turns out that there are werewolves around. The werewolves uh, apparently, um, you know, are pretty hungry. They try and kill everybody, and um, very quickly we start to find out more and more information about the, um, you know, the the the, the storyline. And eventually, it gets to the point where uh, we also find out that the werewolves can change back if you kill the the head werewolf. In other words, so uh, so there's a, a kind of like a uh, can I save my friends kind of a thing going on. Um, as also, as it turns out, the um, Hackett family apparently has been trying to protect people from the werewolves. Um, several of the Hackett family have turned into werewolves. I mean, there's a whole lot going on here. Uh, we've got uh, a whole lot of people involved, you know, like camp counselors, essentially, who are trying to stay alive. And um, hopefully today we will finish the quarry. Let me just put out a quick tweet, and then we'll get started. Um, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. We also found out that um, the... <laughs> That the final other uh, or the original werewolf was apparently some sort of sideshow attraction. Uh, apparently, the werewolf was in kind of like a um, I don't want to say a circus, but more like a like a traveling freak show. Um, you know, like with like uh, they got like the fortune teller and they got like the you know the the dog boy and the things like that. Well, it turns out the dog boy was really a werewolf. Um, and uh, apparently he gets loose, and um, the way he gets loose is someone in Hackett Quarry apparently like burns down like the 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 circus or something along those lines. I can't remember exactly what. And um, basically, what happens is you know the the wolf gets out, the the werewolf, like the original werewolf. And the only thing that I can think is that the goal of the end of this is to kill that original werewolf because killing the original werewolf would essentially free everyone who's been turned into a werewolf 
by the curse, which uh, which sounds pretty cool in my opinion. Um, being able to you know just kind of free everyone of their curse. Um, I don't know if it's actually going to be possible, but um, but we're certainly going to give it a try. All right, tweets are out, and uh, let me pull up the live stream so I can make sure I can ban the uh, the porno bots when they come in, and then we're going to get started. Mr. Nini, you ready to play some horror games and get eaten by some werewolves? Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't know if you're ready. So, if I remember correctly, this should pop us right into the uh, to chapter ten, I believe. So let's go. <laughs> Alien parasite. The table, help me. Okay. Well, can't get much worse than it already is, right? Great. Just like the cartoons. It's been off and on all night. Gives us a little time. How do you figure? They don't like water, remember? Right, right. Oh, we should have just been swimming in the lake all night. And die of hypothermia? No. All right, well, we're good now. <laughs> Night's not over yet. These fuckers know we're in here, and they're coming back the first chance they get. Great news, okay. All right, we gotta get a vantage point. Yeah, I gotta get a vantage point. Make myself a little bit smaller. Well, I got a gun. Such a weird angle. Very strange. Very strange angle. Sometimes the camera angles in this game are a little funky. They're a little funky. It's not okay. Better. Okay, windows open. I want to shut them shades too, you know. Well, let's not let the monsters see us, please. Mr. Nee, what are you doing back there? This horror movie is scary enough. I don't need you pulling out some horror tricks. Watch him wait for right the, just the right moment and he'll jump on top of my head. Scared the crap out of me. He'll be like, oh, you're playing a horror game, huh? It would be really uh, bad if I jumped on your head right now, wouldn't it? Ah. Mr. Nini can fly. Oh God, get in there then, sir. Always like run in there like you're scared of everything in the whole world. Panic mode, activate. 
I remember back when I used to read the Animorph books, there was a specific Animorph book where they, one of them, the, uh, one of the crew transformed into a, um, into a shrew, and apparently the shrew had, like, overwhelming instincts of, um, fear. Like, to the point where literally nobody could control the shrew. Like, it was like a... It was like impossible to overpower the the fear instinct in this uh, in this animal, and like sometimes I feel like Mr. Nimoy is like that. Like he's he's just like there are times where literally he gets scared, and he's so scared that literally like the instinct, the fear instinct in him, is so overwhelming that he can't he can't overpower it. Like it's it's just too much for him, and he just and he freaking panics. And then there's other time when he's not scared, and when he's not scared, he's usually fine, but, you know. This is a pretty big area. I feel like I need to kind of walk around in here and really, uh, and really look. And Mr. Nene is being bad. I don't know what he's doing. It's probably my fault, though. So I have, uh, Mr. M Mr. Nimoy has a summer home. He has a little... A little, a little uh, upstairs house, which is smaller than his regular house. I left him in his upstairs house. Jeez, I'm see really struggling. They're begging for a dollar. Chris Hackett asking campers' parents for additional donations to help with lodge renovation costs. Isn't that what camp fees are for? What else would that money be? Where else would that money be going? Mm. Nice to put a name to a big mean face. So what, you're like Mr. H's brother, I guess? Who? Uh, the big dude from earlier, when you and Ryan went to the radio hut. Mr. H's brother, I guess? Right, right. <laughs> Just drop it back on the floor, boys. They never hang on to nothing, like... Here's this really cool clue that we could possibly, you know, like, have a thing with. And then just, like, just throws it right back on the ground. Because who cares? There's nothing wrong with her as far as I know. Dylan's hand's missing, though. I know that. How long has this guy been here? Long time ago. Long enough ago that it was okay to have an oil painting made of yourself. I kind of want an oil painting of me now. <laughs> Prepare for the attack. Keep looking. Prepare for attack. What am I going to do? Shoot it? Every dusk and dawn all through the summer. What doesn't kill you'll make, make you stronger. stronger. We're here to lead the way. That meets for life, we're proud to proud say. say. Shout at Stroud and shout out loud. We're Hacketeers. Two months and you never learn the words? Oh, Mr. Ne that just scared the crap Showtime, out of Mr. Nini. Mm -hmm. What is going on out there? Should we go find the others? No! We're safer in here and it's nearly morning. What the? Nah, it would 
be a werewolf. There's werewolves, Mr. Nay. Stay close. You don't want to get it. No. Uh, let's wait. Silver though, it's not silver. The office door's locked from the outside. Well, there must be something we can oh, do. Yeah, but what? Silver shells. If we can time it right, we can give them to her. She passes. If she passes. If she passes, beam window, beam window. Oh God, um, beam window, beam window. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Window, window. Let's go window. Oh, quick time events. <laughs> Not like it matters. Dylan, don't die. No, 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 Dylan! Investigate. It's silver. Hey, I'm here. We got a silver shell. We got a silver shell. Hi ho, the Dario. We got a silver shell. What's up, buddy? Who 
we, we just kill though? That's the question. Because all these werewolves are people. So we just killed somebody. Whoever the people Fuck whoever you. the people was. I got you, motherfucker. He's gonna turn back into whoever he he who he or she really was. I believe. Frying pan. Nice nice, Dylan. Nice. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Mr. Nee. Call that. Mr. Nee. No, I didn't find any tarot cards, I don't think. The curse is broken. Whatever the cost, whatever darkness from the night still remains, the future, at least, is now a little brighter. What happened to this family they brought upon themselves, and you shouldn't pity them. I knew I could rely on you. I knew that if orchestrated properly, the events of Hackett's quarry would unfold just the way I wanted them to. And now, well, I suppose, I suppose it's goodbye. Don't worry. I'll never forget how you helped me. Wait, what? Chapter 10 was short. I believe this is chapter 11 now. Ryan Ezeler deceased. Ryan was killed by werewolves in Chris's camp. Laura Kearney deceased. Laura and Travis reached a bloody end at each other's hands. Travis Hackett deceased. Laura and Travis reached a bloody end at each other's hands. Bobby Hackett deceased. Bobby was mauled to death by his werewolf brother. Constance Hackett, deceased. Laura shot Constance face off in a struggle for the gun. Jedediah Hackett, deceased. Jedediah was choked to death by a vengeful Laura. Jacob Kustos, deceased. Jacob was killed by a werewolf. Nick, after Ryan eventually abandoned him in the Hackett's basement. Kaylee Hackett, deceased. Chris Hackett's daughter Kaylee was shot and killed by Laura, who mistook her for werewolf Chris. Chris, still infected, spared by Ryan at the Hackett house. Chris must now face the consequences. Nick Ferillo alive. Nick's werewolf curse was listed, lifted when Caitlin was killed by Caleb. Abigail alive. Abigail made it to the safety of Chris Hackett's surveillance room. Emma Montebank alive. Emma survived the night in the safety of Chris Hackett's surveillance room. Dylan Lenevy alive. Dylan survived the night by taking refuge from Caleb in the kitchen. Caitlin Ka alive. Caitlin survived the night by killing Caleb, curing all those infected by his lineage. Caleb Hackett. Caitlin shot Caleb dead using silver shells, passed to her by Emma and Abigail. There's probably music playing, but I had to turn all the music off for this video because it was all copyright protected. The White Wolf alive. As the sun rises, the White Wolf slinks back into the safety of the woods, waiting for the full moon to come again. Oof. Bodies recovered in summer camp murder mystery. What do you make of that, Anton? Bad journalism? Murder mystery? Isn't that just an unsolved murder? 
Yes, I, I suppose that is what most journalists would say. But perhaps the journalists of North Kill share my supernatural suspicions. Hmm. Yeah, I guess there wouldn't be much competition in North Kill. Probably not getting the best writers there. Okay, can we at least start the podcast before you completely resign yourself to cynicism? I thought we'd done the whole Hackett's Quarry thing. Not this Hackett's Quarry thing. What was this, like three months ago? Old news, dude. Anton, introductions first. We are Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. I'm Grace. And I'm Anton. And together, we explore the possibility of supernatural involvement in real life everyday occurrences. And that's exactly what they are. Real life, everyday occurrences. With a shadow of spiritual, supernatural occurrences. No. <sighs> okay, so I hope you've got hat insurance, Anton, because I'm about to blow your mind. Did you just ask if I had hat insurance? Yes. <laughs> it's responsible to insure those things which mean the most to you. A hat. Yes. Okay, I know where your priorities lie. Go on. Anyway, there actually is a real reason that we're coming back to Hackett's Quarry. There have been some developments, and I've sourced some information. I remain skeptical, but I'm all ears. Under my hat. I was hoping you'd say that. Oh, God, why? Why are you smiling? Stop it, I hate it. Why? I had braces. I have to make use of them sometimes. You do have very pretty teeth. Thank you. That's something that a lot of podcast listeners might not know about me. <clears throat> so, it just so happens I've got someone on the inside. So today's episode is going to have a bit of a show-and-tell vibe to it. Who do you know on the inside? The inside of where? What? You know someone on the inside? Don't we all have someone on the inside? You know, an inner critic that mm. says, stop doing a podcast. No one's listening. You should listen to that voice, Grace. Okay, well, what I really meant is, let's call it an anonymous donation. You know, we're not the only ones who flagged this as a bizarre situation. Someone actually reached out to us. They sent us a package. Did you? You didn't open it. Anyone who, I don't trust anyone who listens to this show. Oh, I couldn't wait to open it. Surprise! Anonymous donation. Okay, you've always promised me since day one of this podcast that if you could see true evidence, you will consider all options, right? Did you not say that? I did say that, yes. I mean, I know you... Knowing for a fact that we would never see any evidence, I did say that. Okay, well, we've been sent information and we need to decide whether it's bizarre or Bonafide. <sighs> okay, fine. Let's do this. For anyone listening at home, we are about to open a package from a mysterious person who listens to this show. If you are the one who sent us whatever it is, congrats, you got us. Sorry, the tape is just really, really, there's just so much tape on the package. Sorry, can you help me with this? Do you have like a key I could like slice at it with? No, I don't want you to dull my key. Just use your fingers. But just give me your fucking key, Anton. No. Give me your fucking key. No. Get your own key. It's not like you lock your door. Of course I lock my door. What are you What are you hiding? What am I hiding? Do you not lock your doors? No, I have nothing to hide. You think that ghosts are real, but you don't lock your doors? No, ghosts couldn't open my doors. They could walk through my walls, Anton. Okay, you need to be more concerned with murderers. Take a look. Apparently, they found another body. Whoa! You can't just show me a picture of a dead body. You got to tell me before you're going to do that. Okay, then let's take this over. Anton, can I show you a picture of a dead body? No! I can't work with that, Anton. Okay, fine. Yes, you. it's, it's a dead body. Okay, wh what is this? What am I looking at? It's one of the hikers that went missing. Do you remember that? Yes, that's the true part of the story. Yeah. Ed Benson was his name. He was drowned in the lake. Okay, drowned or was drowned? Now you're getting grammatical. I'm not getting grammatical. If you drown, you just went swimming and you drowned. If, some, if he's been drowned, then someone drowned him. Well, then I think I implied precisely what I meant to imply. Now, of course, I can't verify this info. Of but... course you can't. What, do I have, like, a history of not verifying Yes, info? it's fake. Okay, but I feel very strongly that he was drowned. Okay, well, do the police know about this? Are the Hackett family suspects? Okay, okay, I like 
that you are getting into this. Here's the thing. The newspaper says this guy's still missing, right? He looks pretty fucking found in this picture. Okay, yeah, I mean, he's not missing. He's right there, but yeah. why? Why would they say he's still missing? Because it is a conspiracy, a cover-up. Don't you see? They're all in on it. I, I, who is all in on it? The Hackett family? The Hackett family, the North Kill Gazette. I told you I've been suspicious of them from the start. Okay, uh, okay, so there's the one hiker, he's dead. What about the other one? Ann Radcliffe? Still missing. Who knows how many bodies are still down there, though. <sighs> I don't know. This is pretty inconclusive. I, I'm sorry that the guy drowned, but this kind of seems like a big to-do over nothing. Or is it a big undo of something, which is what a cover-up is? Okay, you can't just twist my words like that. Okay, so I anticipated your skepticism, which is why I saved this little gem for next. Finally, you're going to present me with some ghost ectoplasm. Put out your ring finger. I've got a little gem to slide onto it. What do you got? Leaked photos from the hiker's camera. Photos that show them at Hackett's Quarry. So? Maybe they were there and then they dropped their camera. It happens all the time. Yeah, they dropped their camera whilst being murdered. And their bags were found there, too. Oh, no way. Do you have a fake photo of them, too? Oh, please. Okay, so you have a picture of bags. These could be anyone's bags. Well, they match up to the ones in their photos from their camera, and they have a monogram of their initials. I think, at least. Or it's water damage. I can't tell. Yeah, okay. That's not nothing. I'll give you that. So... We've got to talk a little more about the Hackett family. Right. So these guys are like the heritage landowners, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Their great-great-great-grandparents were trappers who claimed the land way back when. They just claimed it? Yes, they did. They put their flag on it just like the man on the moon. The Hackett family flag, right. Well, apparently when they claimed it, they found... Quartzite. Quartzite? Okay, I was hoping you would ask. Fun fact, every building in the whole of New York is made of quartzite. That's not fun or a fact. Most of them are. But I digest. Digress? It was a pun. <laughs> they dug the quarry and hit great heights of success before Septimus Hackett, classic bad guy name, the seventh son of the trappers, the number seven, has great supernatural powers, uh -huh. closed the mine down. Okay, so then they only had the land to live off. Yes, you say only, but this land actually spans acres. That's a lot of forest, a lot of unexplored darkness. Ooh, okay, a great place to hide, to have all these dark secrets for this strange, reclusive family. Mm -hmm. And this is where we start to get a little more into paranormal territory. Okay, here acres we go. Acres and acres of haunted woods. If you say so. <laughs> that was it? Acres and acres of haunted woods. I'm kind of surprised it didn't. Uh, there wasn't a little bit more at the end there. I don't know. I'm sure, maybe it's because of the choices that I Welcome made. Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. Welcome back to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, Anton. Today, I'm actually going to pass you some light writing. Okay, you're going to make me read this? Mm-hmm. All right, um, this is... What you're seeing now is a copy of a letter that Kaylee Hackett wrote to her grandma. Allegedly. <sighs> All right, uh, this seems like more of a you job, but I suppose right, I can read I, this. Right, but I feel like if some of the evidence comes from your mouth, it will have more clout. Right, okay, here we go. Gammy. How long we gonna drag this shit out? Mm. I know family is the most important thing, but I wanna know what's outside the forest, outside this damn house and camp, and I sure as hell know that ain't about to happen cause of who we are. Maybe we can explain what's going on. Fucking show people. Then they'll know we got no control over it. 
I know you're just trying to protect us, but one day you won't be here no more. And right now it feels like we stuck in a dark hole. I can't sleep, Gammy. Or if I do, I dream about that fucking fire. We were just dumbass kids back then. I wish it never happened. Love, K, X, O, X, O. That took a turn. Yes. Dream about that fucking fire. Does that not read as the haunted scribblings of someone who saw something that they shouldn't have seen? Yeah, no, I'm fully creeped out. She was clearly going through some stuff. And this is legit? I mean, I don't know why someone would fake it. Then again, I can't verify any of this. So, you've got to suspend your disbelief slightly. Man, this poor girl. Yeah. There was something going on, something eating away at her, and that's what I want to explore. Okay, well, consider my disbelief suspended, for now. Next, we have this empty vial thing. Okay, the way you say empty vial makes me think that there was something creepy in there before. Well, it's not half full, you little optimist, okay? <laughs> We've got a photo from whoever my supernatural fairy godmother may be, but what are your initial thoughts? Your godmother sends you vials full of this, I mean, it looks like there could have been blood in here. My fairy godmother, not my actual godmother. She's estranged. My god, what did she do? It's actually what I did. But the important thing is, look at this vial and tell me it does not scream nefarious ritual. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it could have had blood in it. So, so really quickly before I, I go forward with this, it's, it's actually quite interesting, this podcast, because a lot of this stuff is things that I collected as I played the game. The vial of blood is something that I found. The, um, the letters in the Hackett's house is something that I found. Um, so I think a lot of the clues and various things that they're going over are things that I found in my playthrough, and I think that is actually controlling the podcast in what they're talking about. Because if I hadn't found the vial, if I hadn't found the letters, if I hadn't found the uh, the various clues that were spread around, um, you know, Hackett's Quarry as I was playing, there's a very good chance that this podcast probably would never happen. So this is, I think this podcast is kind of like an epilogue, essentially, of, you know, like everything that I've collected and done in the game so far. It's kind of like, hey, you know, like, look at all these clues. Like, these are the clues that I found as I was playing through. I found the harem scarum poster. Um, I found the newspaper headline scrap, the damage memorabilia, the North Kill Gazette, uh, the charred sheriff's badge. Uh, the family photo, the no swimming sign, uh, the old camp photos, all sorts of interesting things. The the box of matches from the motel, uh, the miner's lunchbox, uh, the rum still, the scrapyard note. I bet you a lot of this stuff is going to come into play in this um, in this sort of like podcast. Any piece of information that could potentially um, lead to a story is probably going to, to lead to a story. Um this is the evidence right here. There's the empty vial right there. I also found a bloated corpse in the water. They talked about a, a corpse that they found. I'm not exactly sure if that's the one that they found. Um, there was also photos on the phones and stuff like that that we found. So uh, the memory card that I found in the camera, uh, they were talking about pictures that, that were uh, recovered from a, um, a camera. And so that's probably what that is. Um, these are the letters, Kaylee's letters. I'm missing a couple things. So I'm missing whatever was right here, and I'm missing whatever was right here. So these two pieces of evidence are no longer are not in my my database. But I have eight out of ten of the evidence collected. So hopefully that'll give me a pretty good um, ending here. I'm not exactly sure how much of an ending that's going to give me, but let's find out. Yeah, something about this doesn't look like anything normal. Yeah, well, it's a vial full of fucking blood. Okay, but putting the Hackett family aside for a moment, there's more to this. Are you ready for some real spooky shit? I'm ready for real spooky shit. I don't know if you can provide it, but please try. <sighs> don't get too freaked out. I'll try my hardest. Okay, do you want to hold my hand? No. Okay, do you need someone to comfortingly pat your back? Please just... Say what you're going to say. Do you want me to turn all the lights on so you don't... I don't want you to do anything. I want you to say what you have. <laughs> okay, so what's this? What are we looking at now? A photo by one of the counselors. 
Emma Mountebank downloaded from her phone. My God, is this real? Well, <laughs> that is what we're here to discuss. Okay, this looks shopped. I mean, doesn't it? Okay, but w if you downloaded photos from my phone, yes, they would all be shopped as well. There would be a filter on it to make my eyes look big and cheeks look pink. But I don't even think that has even any of those filters. Look at the eyes and tell me that's not real danger. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, weird, bizarre, yet bona fide. So um, when I was running from a werewolf, Emma, Emma was... Uh, she shocks the werewolf with a taser and then immediately takes a picture of the werewolf. It was a choice that I had. So that picture of the werewolf is what they're looking at right now. I'm pretty sure that they're basically trying to figure out whether the picture of the werewolf is real or not, which is kind of cool. Hell happened. More than we are being told. Yeah. There's something else, too. Okay. <sighs> Look at what happens when I put it through a negative filter. Whoa! Okay, what is that? It's her! The hag of Hackett's quarry! See? Full circle! Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That could be anything. Like what? Please, try to explain I, I don't what know that... what's that thing. There's this thing that makes your mind. You see faces and stuff. There's people... There, there's Jesus shows up on toast every once in a while. This could be whatever. Well, I don't need to hear too much more about your breakfast, but I can't believe that you're still questioning this. You're doubting your own cynicism now, though, I can tell. I can smell the doubt that you usually apply to other things on yourself. Picks or didn't happen, right? Well, picks so did happen. No, picks you can fabricate. Experiences you can't. I need to... I, I would need to see the Hag of Hackett's Quarry myself. Well, if you want to go to North Kill with me, no, I actually have a really I don't. good okay. relationship. Okay, I believe you. Okay, but you know what? I have something that couldn't be fabricated. Claw marks in a wall. I I could make this right now. Really? Just f find me a wall. I'll take a fork and just go to town. Wow, what an artisan! Thanks. Well, to me, this isn't actually overtly supernatural because it could have just been you know an animal or someone's angry parrot but it'd be unfair not to discuss why because the audience has come to expect a certain length of the podcast so we actually have to sometimes do a little bit of filler yeah that's true we don't have much to talk about well whoever did reach out thought it was worth sharing there's a chance this is all just a prank you know it was just a prank, Anton! Who even are you? It's probably just some teenager who's making fun of you. It's probably that dude who came on and gave us a one-star review. I would love to tell you that that's implausible, but a teenager making fun of me is probably the most familiar experience of my life. <laughs> Moving on! How about this? Tell me this isn't freaky as shit. Oh! Is that skin? Skin. Fur. Whatever you want to call it, really. Okay, it looks human. Is that a tattoo? I don't think so. Or maybe a really bad one. Wait. Is it? Apparently, this belongs to whatever creature supposedly caused all this. Okay, do we have the actual thing? Did they capture it? Can I... Can I see it in the uh, in its weird flesh, so to speak? You want to touch the flesh. I want to touch the flesh. Well, fortunately, the person who sent this to me was smart enough to know that it would be dangerous to steal the actual evidence, not to mention they might suspect that you, Anton, would hide it away so as to sabotage this legitimate investigation. Right. I am known for destroying evidence. Convenient that we can't see the real deal, huh? Come on, man. You're desperate not to believe. If there's reasonable doubt, you have to assume it's not real, Occam's razor. But look at everything we've seen. Put it all together, objectively. So, what we've got here, this could incriminate the Hackett family, or what's left of them, at least. Wait, you believe it? I, I don't know. At the very least, we should tell someone. The police should know, right? <sighs> Do you believe it? All of it. No, I'm not the supernatural stuff. I'm talking about killing those hikers. We've got a body, evidence they were there. This is real stuff, Grace. It's stacking up against the Hackett's. We might yeah. we might actually we got, know something. We got a whole flapjack stack of evidence. Yes. So what do we do? 
shut off the podcast and report this to somebody? What? No! <laughs> Anton, we finally have something going here. It's getting juicy. Yes, we have something real. We ha Actual people have actually died. This is actually crazy. Grace, you did it. Just take the win. Let's turn this off and actually report it. No, say actually more ass. <laughs> oh, man. So we convinced the skeptic. We convinced the skeptic. Hikers remain dis recovered. Hiker remains the recovered Hackett family suspected. Surviving member of Hackett family has been arrested and charged with murder of missing hikers. Edward Benson and Ann Radcliffe. Surviving member... Surviving member is Chris. The only one that survived was Chris. So uh, Chris Hackett is apparently now in jail. Um, he is the one that turns into a werewolf, by the way. So probably not a good thing that he's been arrested. I mean, that he's going to turn into a werewolf and eat a bunch of prisoners. And who knows how that's going to go. Unless they got some silver around to kill him with. It's probably not going to go very well. <laughs> oh, man. So my ending was different than other people's endings. If you've uh, never played this game or you didn't watch any of the previous episodes, let me fill you in. You have to make choices along the way, and the choices kind of, uh, you know, choose your ending, so to speak. My ending uh, pretty much ended in the Hackett's family uh, getting, like, completely murdered. Um, all of them, basically, were uh, dead by the end, except for Chris. And um, Chris is apparently have been arrested for murder of the missing hikers. So the evidence and things that we collected along the way um, actually worked to our advantage and uh, and helped to uh, to kind of like right the wrongs, so to speak. Although I'm not entirely sure that getting rid of the Hackett family was the right thing to do. Um, the mother that I accidentally killed with a shotgun. Um, not, not a phrase you hear every day, uh, was um, trying to keep people alive. She was trying to do the right thing. And um, I also feel really bad about uh, Chris's brother uh, getting killed, which I think his name was Travis. Travis was actually trying to hunt down the white wolf. That was what his goal was. And I have a feeling that, um, that if I was able to, to get on Travis's good side, which I, which I did try to on several occasions, but did not succeed in, no matter how I tried, um, I have a feeling that if you could get on the good side of Travis, you could potentially work together to take out the white wolf. And by taking out the white wolf, you would essentially uh, remove the uh, werewolf curse from everybody and, uh, and maybe have a much better ending than the one that I achieved. Uh, the one I achieved was a, was a decent ending. It was decent. Um, I managed to save a couple people. I lost Jacob and I lost, um, uh, what was his name? I can't remember, Ryan. I lost Ryan. Um, there was a couple losses in the, in the process. I didn't, I didn't have a perfect ending. Um, I really screwed up with Jacob. Jacob was in the basement, and um, I had a chance to save him, and I messed it up, and he ended up getting eaten by a werewolf. And I'm pretty sure that the werewolf that ate him was was freaking um, was freaking Ryan. Uh, but then, you know, Ryan actually survived because uh, I killed Caleb um, with the silver bullet at the end there, and uh, and then all the other werewolves that he had bitten changed back so it was kind of like a, a kind of a cool thing you have unlocked the death rewind feature this feature allows you three opportunities within a single playthrough of quarry to reverse a playable character's death and try again to save them use your three lives wisely enable the death rewind feature now Ooh. You can enable or disable the death rewind feature via the accessibility section of the settings menu at any time Wolfpack, host or join a game with friends and a shared experience. Um, couch co-op, pass the controller and play with friends. Bizarre yet bona fide podcasts. The woman in the woods, the boy who cried Bigfoot. The missing presumed dead. Hangry for revenge. No hoax without fire. The hag of Hackett's quarry. Um, these actually might be cool to listen to. So there actually was a woman 
um, in the beginning of the of the game. Um, the woman appeared several times, once in the back of the car, uh, a couple different moments, and uh, and I'm actually kind of curious what her story is. Uh, we might actually go over these together. Um, let's take a look at some of this other stuff first before we go there. Uh, so the chapter select, just wanted to go over this real quick, uh, just for fun. Um, uh, movie mode. What the hell is movie mode? Uh, so the prologue involved uh, the basically the two camp counselors that go missing at the beginning. Um, and then we kind of get into the, the beginning of the game. They introduce all the people. Um, very quickly, things start going poorly. Um, people get separated. Uh, some people get, uh, get hurt. Um, this is where uh, we lose... I think it's... I think it was Ryan that we lose. I can't remember all the names of all the people, but we we uh, he gets bit by a werewolf, uh, and very quickly that chain things start to go just really badly. The werewolves start hunting us down. Uh, we actually get um, help in the form of the original two um, camp counselors, basically that show up to kind of save the day. Um, one of them is a werewolf though, so he's locked up. He ends up trying to kill Emma. Like there's a bunch of really cool things that happen in here. I thought there was more chapters than ten. I'm pretty sure even in the title I wrote 10, 11, 12, but I guess chapter 10 is the last chapter. Um, I could totally see myself doing a quick playthrough of this to try and save some people. Let's uh, take a look at some of these uh, podcasts real quick. I'm actually really interested in this. Um, I want to see uh, what they say about the woman in the woods specifically. Mr. Nini is standing on my head for some reason. Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. So what's the deal? Are we recording? Um, yes, I think so. Yes, got it. We are live, baby. We are not live. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal, during which we take you down an untrodden path to the land of mind fuckery, leaving you wide-eyed and wondering, yet hopefully answering some questions along the way. I'm Grace. Anton? Oh, um, I'm Anton. And together, we hope to prove the involvement of supernatural phenomenon in real-world mysteries. What? No, you hope to prove it. I'm just here to keep you on the straight and narrow, guiding you back to reality when you stray too far into the world of make-believe. And after all, isn't that what friends are for? No, friends generally go bowling and stuff, and they don't sit around making podcasts together. We're co-workers. But if it weren't for us, who would investigate the weird happenings of the world? I don't know, the FBI? Also like 500 other podcasts? Why should we leave everything to the FBI? Ask not what my country can do for me, Anton. Okay, It may so have been the 50s, but it is advice that rings true today. So this podcast is an act of patriotism now, is it? Okay, so I originally thought that because this is our first episode, maybe we should ease our listeners in gently. But I found something... And it is bizarre. Well, I may live to regret this, but the floor is yours. What do you make of this? Six teens in the woods, one dead body, and no remains. A dead body's pretty big remain. No, I mean, just listen. Six teens head into this big wooded area that's supposed to be haunted, right? One of them wanders off and bam, walks squelch first into a dead body. Okay, you say squelch first and you think I'm just going to let that go. And get this, they book it out of there, scared out of their skinny jeans, but when they return with the police, the body's gone. The dead woman's been taken. Right, so I assume the cops saw drag marks in the dirt? Nope, nothing. So no body, no sign there ever was a body. Clearly the kids made it up. <laughs> you sound just like the cops, man. Or... How I imagined they sounded anyway. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. Unfortunately, you weren't there to be murdered? No, to, you know, have a little chit-chat with the cops. I just think I could have given them some perspective. Oh, you're that person on the crime scene, like I a mean, serial if, killer return. How do I know you didn't do this, Grace? I'm just going to say, Anton, if I see police tape, I might linger in case they need a bouncing board. Okay, where did this happen? Where is there? Upstate New York. 
Hackett Woods or something. I think there used to be a big quarry there, but now it's just acres and acres of privately owned land. Okay, how about this for a theory? Kids were trespassing on privately owned land, so the owners called the cops. The kids made up some story about a dead body to take the heat off. No way. The voice sounded really convincing. Oh, okay, then it must be true. Also, how do you know he sounded convincing? Well, this is how I found out. The boy from the woods posted a reaction video about seeing the dead body. He's freaked out, wants to know what the sweet hell is going on. He's only 15, Anton, and he's scared. Grace, look at me and tell me you haven't been messaging teenagers on the internet. Of course not. You have to become friends first no, to no, message them and no, I, my no, friend no, request no, no. is pending. I need to solve this for him. This is the type of stuff that can mess you up as a kid. Then tell him the truth. If there was a body, it was taken by a bear. End of discussion. What kind of bear kills its prey, dicks off for a whole afternoon, then pops back and guzzles it whole? Could have been two different bears. So you're saying there was a bear accomplice. <laughs> That's actually pretty interesting. This is the first rational thing you've said so I'm far. I'm calling it the Goldilocks defense. <sighs> okay, fine. If this woman didn't get eaten, what happened? No, like I'm saying maybe she did get eaten, just not by any known creature. Oh, brother. Come Werewolf. on, open your mind. That's the whole point. Look, Grace, I want to open my mind. I really do, but I'm going to need help. My mind is guarded. It needs to be coaxed open with delicious evidence and facts. Fine by me. I'll tempt that shy little mind of yours right open and slimed with my paranormal juices. Has this gotten weird? This feels weird. Definitely. But weird <laughs> is the order of the day. So how about this? I'm going to contact the boy who posted the story and present undisputable evidence that something happened in those woods. And you present your mind to me, open and ready to be stuffed. Ew. But, okay, I'm in. Full pinky swear? Full pinky swear. Cross my heart times a billion. If you show me actual proper evidence, I will reconsider my cynicism. If this dead body thing is bizarre yet bona fide, I'll change my mind. Sorry, can I just get one more pinky swear? Because it was so sweaty that it felt like it just slipped okay, right well, out. Okay, well, it was and I don't sweaty on your end, like... so me redoing it is not going to do anything. You need to wash your hands. She's literally washing her hands. She's literally washing her hands. Okay, um, I think it should be clean now. Okay, that was so fast. I don't trust that you properly washed it, but fine. Oh, man. You just signed your life away. You know I'm not going to stop until I prove you wrong, don't you? Well, then we'll be doing this podcast until the day we die. Which might be sooner than we think with all the horrors lurking in the forests, cryptids, trolls, creepy shit like that. You know, I think that's a great hook to leave our listeners dangling on, don't you? Is that your polite way of saying you're done? I can only take a certain amount of your imagination at once, Grace. It's kind of like radiation. Little doses at a time are fine, but anything more in my face might melt off. That's, <laughs> like, in a weird way, a compliment, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, folks, thanks for listening. We'll have a lot more about the unexplained phenomenon of the world in episodes to come, but for now, I'm focusing on what happened to that woman in the woods. So we can say for certain whether it's bizarre yet bona fide or bizarre yet. Anton, what's the episode bona fide? Bullshit. Okay, that's a little strong, but you're a bitter, jaded soul, so I'll allow it. Hey. See you next time, folks. <laughs> so at this point, Anton, I'm going to put in some sort of spooky music. Okay. How was that? Cool, right? I'm totally proving you wrong, by the way, dude. You're going to eat your word. Grace, you have to hit stop on the thing, otherwise we're still recording. Oh, shoot. This one? No, here, look. No, here, look. Let me do it. Ah, it's cool, man. We can edit it out in post. Yeah, they didn't edit it out. Mm -mm. They did not edit it out. We can edit it out. They didn't edit it out. <laughs> Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. Welcome to the latest episode of Bizarre Yet Bonafide. If you're here, it means that you, too, wish to delve into the unexplained mysteries that pierce our understanding of the world and maybe, just maybe, discover the 
devastating truth behind them. Welcome, welcome one and all to our devastatingly unpopular podcast. You're in a good mood. I just enjoyed your dramatic opening. Don't be gross, Anton. What the hell? That doesn't even make sense. So, last week we explored a report of a dead body in the woods found by some kid who was underage drinking with his buddies. Firstly, false report. And second, you don't know they were underage drinking. That's libel. Oh, come on. How did you spend your nights when you were 15? Playing video games with a glass of warm milk, if you must know. That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. Shut up. And by the way, we don't know it was false. We just know that the body he claimed to see was gone by the time he returned with the police. I remember, yeah. Pretty sus. Pretty sus indeed. Well, guess what? I reached out to that kid. Disclaimer, we do not condone stalking minors online, like at all. He's adamant he saw a body. Listen to the message he sent. I remember the smell. It was kind of sweet, but like in a bad way. I was super freaked out and just ran back to the others. When I showed the cops where I found it, the body was gone. They said I was lucky they didn't book me for time wasting. It got me real worried because my girlfriend's going to summer camp around the same area. And if there's something killing people out there, I don't think she should go. Do I need to remind you of the boy who cried wolf? Notice the way he phrased it. Something out there. And I'm not talking wolves. I'm talking cryptids. Okay, here we go. Yes, cryptids. Creatures of the deep. Menaces of the wild. Basically, animals that don't exist within the realms of what we know to be real. Loch Ness Monster. Bigfoot. Werewolves. Yeti. Or that don't exist at all. Probably the biggest name out there. You all know him. You all love him. It's America's Sweet Squatch. That's right. It's Bigfoot. Oh, he's an A-lister cryptid, all right. He's pulling in for the crowd. Racking up them followers. Dishing out that content. Soaking up that hashtag ad revenue. Yep. He's... Go with it. Big. What? <laughs> oh. That's it? It's in the name. I know, Anton, not you every just landing said his gets name. stuck. If I were an Olympic athlete, I would lose points for that. I realize that. Okay, Anton, stop getting distracted. How can I keep you safe from this magnificent beast if you don't have all the facts? How about I just stay out of the woods? Time to learn about Bigfoot, or biggest footus, as they say in Latin. Absolutely, they do not. Here. <laughs> Read this. Big, Bigfoot is. is considered by cryptozoologists as a species, not an individual cryptid. It is thought to be a hairy ape-like humanoid that stands up to 10 feet tall. Most sightings have been in the Pacific Northwest and North America. They communicate through howls, screams, moans, grunts, and whistles. Whistles. Variations of ape-like creatures have been spotted all over the world, known as skunk ape, wood booger, yeti, and many more. Skunk wood ape? Booger? Skunk ape? That's unnecessary. Imagine just going about your business thinking your name's Gerald or Steve just to find out the world's calling you skunk ape. No wonder he's attacking people. I'd be pissed too. That's assuming he understands English. Like, skunk ape in Sasquatch language might be like... <laughs> Do that again? <laughs> Surprisingly close. I was impressed too. Okay, what's his weakness? How do I kill a Bigfoot if it ever comes to blows? Protect me, Grace. You should never kill a Bigfoot. They have feelings and families and hopes and dreams. Also, I'm not sure there are specific ways like a crucifix on a vampire or silver and wolfsbane on a werewolf. I think you're bearing the lead here. If there was a body, which there wasn't, it's way more likely it was the work of some machete-mad serial killer or something. Listen, thousands of people have vanished in national parks in recent years. Something big has got to be afoot, if not big foot. Maybe Wendigos or the Knicks? I know I'm going to regret this, but what is the Knicks? The Knicks has got some serious issues, my friend. It's an aquatic humanoid that lures kids to water and drowns them because it's lonely. Most active on Midsummer's Night, Christmas Eve, and Thursdays. Wait, wait, wait. Thursdays? Yeah. Maybe Thursday is the Knicks' Friday. Like, after a long, tough week at work, he just wants to let his hair down. Maybe drown some kids. Three-day weekend, baby. Okay, so the Knicks is not someone you'd want to go for a beer with. Yeah, I'd say, even as a single girl, I wouldn't go for a drink with the Knicks. But Bigfoot, what? I mean, what the hell? Yeah, 
I mean, of course, yes. I would. would. You, yeah, with of Bigfoot. Course, yeah. Of course, you date Bigfoot, even though you suspect him to be. I mean, he's a, like he's tall, which like really ticks a box for me. That's huge. Also, like, how fun would it be to have like a boyfriend that you could call Woodbugger? Even though you suspect him to be the culprit behind bloody murder, you need to raise your standards, dude. I bet it was a misunderstanding. Maybe a Bigfoot came across a human, attacked them out of fear, then just booked it because he didn't want to do hard time. Big feet are not aware of our judicial system. How could you possibly know that? I also read that they bury their dead, so they might bury anything they kill, too. I think I know where this is going. Yep. The missing body in the woods. What if it didn't disappear? What if it was buried by Bigfoot? You've got to think outside the box here. And by the way, there's loads of other evidence of Bigfoot too. Get this, miners, and we're not talking about the one that I DM, right. in the 1900s reported being attacked by ape men. And in the same year, a U.S. citizen was kidnapped by a family of Bigfoot for six days. Plus, a man in Georgia claims to have smelled a Bigfoot. Okay, so Bigfoot smells like shit and you still want to date him. The real issue is whether he'd want to date me, if I'm being honest. I'm not his type. It's a known fact that Bigfeet are actually sexually attracted to cows. No way, I'm shutting this down. Bigfoot being sexually attracted to cows is where I draw the line. If only I could look like a cow and get a Bigfoot. Nope. Oh, how about this? Maybe a Bigfoot romanced a cow, and that's how the Sheep Squatch was born. The what? The Sheep Squatch. It's another cryptid. White fur, big teeth, curly horns. In what world do you expect me to believe in a Sheep Squatch? How bad would you feel if you met a Sheep Squatch one day, and it said, you didn't believe in me? All this time, I believed in you. So are they killing people in the woods, too? Maybe this poor person the kid saw came across a Sheep Squatch and thought it was just a sheep. But really, it was a squatch. A squatch in sheep's clothing. Well, regardless of your crackpot theories, I now need to go away and forget I ever heard Bigfoot, Romanced, and Sheep Squatch in the same sentence. Which is probably a good place to leave it for today. By the way, I'm saying hell no on the cryptid thing. Or the body at all, for that matter. I still think this kid was lying, probably to impress his friends. Well, I've got an idea. Oh, no. He said it was a woman, right? I'm going to run a check on all missing females from upstate New York around the date this kid said he saw the body. Finally, some real-life investigation. Now we're talking. Thanks for joining us, friends. See you next time. Yeah, and if you got this far, we definitely owe you seven minutes of your life back. Oh, things you say to all girls you meet. Seriously? <laughs> oh, things you say to all girls you meet. So it's interesting that the podcast is is by these two people that have no clue what they're talking about, right? But there's little bits of truth in the story. So the body um, being there on the ground probably means that the person was attacked by a werewolf. Um, the werewolf obviously didn't kill the person. So this is the this is the um, kind of the the, the seething uh, truth. So. When a person is attacked by a werewolf, they eventually turn into a werewolf themselves. And in the sh in the game, we actually came across several times where somebody was mortally wounded and uh, turning into a werewolf saved them. So this person was probably mortally wounded. They probably weren't dead, but they were pretty close to dead. And uh, they had been infected by another werewolf. When the police came back to get the body... Obviously, the person had already turned into a werewolf and then obviously walked away on their own. So this is uh, this is an interesting story that that is essentially true, but they have no clue what they're talking about. Right. Um, and then the other thing that interests me here is that the boy said that there what did he say? His girlfriend was going to become a camp counselor here and that that he didn't want her to go so we have another little bit of information that this boy is related to one of the camp counselors which we um you know had in the story uh there was um a couple of them right so uh, one of the girls died and i don't know if that's this boy's uh girlfriend but mm, uh, i'm not sure let's go on to um the podcast number three missing presumed dead let's uh, check this one out shall we Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. And
Anton, Anton, Anton. What? Oh, Anton. Oh, sweet little Anton. Stop. What are you doing? I hate this. Get yourself a napkin, old pal, because you're about to take a big, juicy bite into the tantalizing fruit of mystery. Why do you insist on making everything weird? I gotta be me, baby. Anyway, welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. I'm Grace. And I'm Anton. And this week, we return to the story of the unidentified body that disappeared in Hackett Woods, upstate New York. Unidentified until now. So this is the dead body some kids reported seeing, even though there was absolutely no proof. No proof? Until now. Okay, you're clearly hyped up on some kind of sugary drink right now, so go ahead. Get it out of your system. I checked the missing person cases in that area, and you best start calling me Amazing Grace because you're about to hear the oh-so-sweetest sound of me solving this mystery. You just ruined Amazing Grace for me, which is a beautiful song. You've taken something from me today. That's right. I've done it. Put a face to a name or a name to a dead body. Anne Radcliffe. She's one of the two hikers recently reported missing, presumed dead, in upstate New York. And you know what else is in upstate New York? Hackett Woods. I bet she's our Jane Doe. Okay, so two people are missing. Putting aside the fact that this is a huge area and assuming these cases are linked is insane, that kid only claimed to have seen one body. So what now, two people just disappeared? Yeah, spooky, right? Not really, just super tragic. The part about these two hikers going missing, although I hate to say it, but people go missing all the time, especially in the wilderness. Bears are everywhere, probably. Actually, no, because look, check this out. In an article I found online, it says they probably didn't get eaten by a bear. It does not say probably. What kind of journalism is that? It's some small town rag from nearby. And no, it didn't use those exact words, but I read it and this wildlife expert says that if they were killed by an animal, there would be signs. And actually, it's far more likely that they just sort of fell victim to the dangers of the wilderness. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You're fighting my case for me, Grace. But the article also interviewed their family members who refused to believe that these guys got into any accidental trouble. They say they were seasoned hikers who absolutely knew what they were doing. Can you argue with seasoned hikers? Does it not create an evocative image of two hikers covered in seasoning? Well, sorry to be that guy, but being good at something doesn't exempt you from tragedy. How does that quote go? Every corpse on Mount Everest was once a very motivated individual? Jesus, that's dark. Anton, really? You have to bring it there? I'm sorry. And it doesn't explain how Anne Radcliffe's body was found all alone, not to mention hours later just disappeared completely. Well, I totally stand by my point that we just can't say for sure she was in those same woods. Why not? You're boring. Well, is there any evidence? Uh, well, no. The article actually says there's nothing to indicate they were ever actually there in the first place. Kept that quiet, didn't you? But! A lack of evidence doesn't necessarily mean it's not true. Grace, have you ever done jury duty? No. Why? Good. No reason. Well, my point is, that's not the work of anything natural. For those of you who missed out on previous episodes, we've been talking about unidentified cryptids in the American wilderness and whether or not they're behind this. Okay, but hear me out. The wildlife expert said no animal could have killed the hikers because they'd have left signs. Well, surely that goes for made-up animals. Uh, I mean, cryptids as well, right? Yeah, I guess. Cryptids are usually messy eaters. I'm sorry to say, but this feels like the work of a human to me. What was the other hiker's name? Ed Benson. So if they were in the woods, which I'm now aware is a big if, perhaps the largest if I've ever seen, but maybe the hikers got lost, freaked out, and turned on each other. Or one of them lured the other into the woods for a murder-suicide thing. Or maybe Ed wanted to claim Anne's life insurance, so he killed her. He could still be in the woods right now, after murdering her and hiding the body. That's a whole lot more terrifying than Bigfoot. Your mind is dark today. It is what it is, Grace. Humans are more messed up than any cryptid out there. Oh! contraire. I think, in fact, it is what it isn't. Or it isn't what it is. Wait, basically, I don't think it's humans or cryptids. You don't? Nope. Sorry, Bigfoot, but fuck off. Unless you want to get a drink sometime. Wink. We've got first class tickets on the ghost train. 
<laughs> the ghost choo train. Choo choo. Choo choo. Choo choo, choo, Mr. Lee. Choo choo. Do you ever run out of steam? I do not, just like our ghost train, which runs off the energy of spirits of the damned. I'm the train driver. You're the, uh, conductor, I guess, and we are on our way, my friend. Where is this metaphor going? To this! Say hello to Grace Corvin, ghost investigator! So what, we're a ghost podcast now? I like to think we embrace all sorts of unique paranormal entity here at Bizarre Yet Bonafide Headquarters. And by embrace, I mean... In any way you want. Wink. Headquarters? This is your apartment. It's got one room and a mold problem. I'm maintaining an illusion. How about this? The teens only went into Hackett Woods looking for ghosts. There was no sign of the hikers ever being there, right? And there was a dead body that disappeared. Put those together and it's obvious. The vengeful ghost killed Anne and snatched Ed into another plane of existence. Some ethereal other dimension, which is when the teen saw Anne's body all alone. Then the ghost came back and snatched her away too. Ghosts can do that? Yup. Well, fuck. I know, right? Nah, you still haven't convinced me. Like, sure, these two hikers did go missing nearby, and I'm prepared to believe there's the smallest chance the teen boy may have actually seen Anne's body, which would mean someone hid it afterwards. That's scary enough without the need for ghouls. It could have been Ed covering up the murder. Maybe the landowners are psycho cannibals that killed and ate both hikers. Maybe even the cops had something to do with it. We don't know. It's fucked, but it's not paranormal. Okay, listen, I'm not sold on it yet either, but I'm definitely, like, interested. Like, I'm down to clown with the idea, you know? Ugh, I hate clowns. Okay, so what? You're going to keep looking into ghostly interference rather than find any logical truth behind the disappearing dead body? It's one and the same, my friend. Basically, if this ghost did kill the hikers, we need to know why and how to stop it happening again. Which means I need to dig up some Ghost facts. How are you going to do that? From the internet. You better get started then. Type ghosts into a search engine and there are 4,660 million results. Not all of them safe for work. Wow, I'll start with those (laughs) ones then. Keep that page open. I'm diving in. Join us next time, listeners, as we delve into the translucent, ectoplasmic, haunting world of ghosts. Ectoplasmic? What's the matter? You scared? Of you? Yeah, a little. See you next time. Peace out. I'm not sure what to make of that one at all. That one was kind of crazy. Uh, I really kind of want to listen to all these. Uh, Hangry for Revenge. <laughs> Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Bizarre Yeah Bonafide with me, Grace. Now, now, Grace, that's no way to welcome our listeners back into the fold. Grace? Mm. Okay, for those of you wondering why you've tuned into Sourpuss Radio, I'm delighted to tell you that there has been an update on the infamous missing dead body case. Okay, fine, but just so you know... She's back, everyone! Just so you know... I am absolutely not done with it. I've got my thoughts and my theories and a pretty promising lead, actually. No way. You're not getting off that easily. Let's tie up this delicious little loose end, shall we? What happened with the body and the kid who saw it? Oh, and which handsome co-host was it who reminded you a few weeks back about the boy who cried wolf? Okay, fine. The kid cried wolf. Big whoop. A tale as old as time. Apparently, he made it all up to scare his girlfriend. Now, I'm no expert on charming the ladies. Obvious. Continue. But I don't think freaking the hell out of your date is the best way to win their heart. True. But it does lead on quite nicely to my next theory. Oh, yeah? Enlighten me. Men are shitheads. I mean, sadly, yeah. And the women those shitheads scorn, they're pretty fucked up. 
Listen up, guys. Quit scorning. Knock it off. Because the truth of the matter, Anton, is that even though there was no body, it doesn't take away the fact that these hikers did go missing. This one here, Anne Radcliffe, she's out there somewhere, alive or dead. I mean, how do we even know they were in those specific woods in the first place? It's such a vast area. It could be totally unrelated to anything. No, Anton. It's ghosts. You really are relentlessly stubborn, aren't you? It's no secret how many people go inexplicably missing in North America, and a great deal of missing persons cases leave behind no trail whatsoever. And what else leaves no trail? <laughs> ghosts. Because they float and glide through stuff. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. You're being nice. Why? I'm trying to not be a shithead so you don't come back as a ghost and haunt me. Wait, who the hell says I'm dying before you? I've seen how you live. You had peanut butter butter pops for lunch. Weren't they discontinued ages ago? I guess you just went ahead and ignored the expiration date? Uh, yeah. But nuts are good for you. And everyone knows stuff in the freezer doesn't go bad. You kept them in the freezer? No, Anton. I found them in the freezer when I moved in. You're disgusting. Anton, if I said to you, famous ghost stories, what would you think of? Copyright infringement lawsuit? Wrong! Here, read this. Oh, sorry. Um, this one? Right. Well, Grace, I'd think of the hitchhiking hag or the white lady, of course. Interesting, Anton. Tell me more. Different variations of these famous ghost stories are told all over the world. Wow. So it sounds to me like there is a specific type of ghost that manifests in different ways to different people. Funnily enough, I've been doing some research on this. Which means you typed it into the internet and are about to quote the first web page result. Dude, what happened to being nice? I didn't say I would be nice, I just said I wouldn't be a shithead. Well, you're on thin ice, pal. Sorry, continue. So, this research told me that often these stories are about vengeful female spirits called things like the white lady of something or the hag of somewhere, all seemingly related to women being scorned, ranging from spousal abuse to vows being broken, their loved ones taken from them, that kind of gnarly stuff. Very gnarly, yeah. One story in particular tells of a man so concerned that his wife might cheat on him while he was at war he locked her in the basement. Didn't think about the possibility he might croak it, did he? He died on the battlefield, and she wasted away to nothing in the dark. Her ghost still remains, wandering our plane, and it's said that when she approaches, her hollow, desperate groans ring in your ears, and you are struck with this sudden pang of intense hunger an echo of the pain she was left to suffer. People think the starvation killed her, but no, quite the opposite. She was so hungry, trapped down there, that she resorted to eating her own flesh, ripping skin and sinew from bone, draining blood from bane as she tore herself apart. They say her hunger is what left her lingering in our world. The hunger for revenge. Holy shit. Exactly. So because of the way she was treated, the white lady, or the hag, generally punishes bad behavior like infidelity, abandonment, greed, and murder, and rewards things like faithfulness and commitment to family. All right, so basically, for good reason, she's hangry. Super hangry and mangled, too, given the whole ingesting her own flesh thing. Yeah, it's lucky she wasn't a vegan like me. You took a bite of my bacon cheeseburger yesterday. You said it was free range! You're vaguely vegan at best. A vegan, yeah. But right now, I'm hungry for answers. My theory is that these are specific types of spirit, not one particular ghost. You'll see loads of different stories about the white lady, the hag, the wretched woman, whatever you want to call them. Vengeful spirits cursed to linger in our world due to some wrongdoing that befell them. So going back to the hitchhiker, was she wronged in some way too? Yep. She drowned herself after her husband left her for another woman. So she's often seen drenched to the skin, sea water dripping from her mouth, overflowing from her constantly waterlogged lungs. Her once glowing face, dull and bloated. Her once songbird voice, 
gargling the discordant cries of her now sodden vocal cords. Okay, you're way too good at this. It's the whole unfinished business thing. Cliché, I know, but these spirits are doomed to wander our mortal coil, seeking vengeance or closure on something or someone that wronged them. So what does that mean for our fake dead body and missing hikers? I hear rumors that there have been recent sightings of a white lady, or hag, in none other than dun-dun-dun, Hackett Woods, yes which is near where those guys were last seen. A scary thought, albeit absolute nonsense. Joke all you want. We have a deal, remember? I present you with evidence and you admit that the paranormal is real. I just have a bit more research to do, something more hands-on. And then, oh, Anton, I hope you've got ice cream in the freezer because you're going to need a big old scoop to go with your humble pie. Oh, man. Okay. Go ghost hunting all you want, but I think we should draw a line under these missing hikers. We don't even know for sure they were in Hackett Woods, and I'm betting they turn up eventually. Oh, don't worry. I'm in full ghost mode now. Just don't do anything dangerous, all right? Aw, I didn't think you cared. I like you enough that I don't want you to get murdered in the woods. Well, that's it for today, folks. Join me next episode for something a little different. Seriously, what are you going to do? Don't worry your pretty little head about it. Catch you on the flip side, bizarros. Pop, pop, peanut butter, butter pops. Pop, pop, pop them in your mouth. Pop, 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 peanut butter puffs. So there actually is a ghost in this story, and uh, and it's really interesting that they kind of like honed honed in on the ghost. I, if I could pull up, like, one of my old episodes, I could maybe, like, find the ghost in Chapter 1 and show her to you. Um, she's kind of creepy looking. She's a little creepy. Not going to lie. She appears in the back seat of the uh, car in the first episode. And uh, I kind of want to pull it up just so I could show you guys that, they, they, you know, they're not just talking crap, you know, so to speak. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, da -da -da. And I'll pull it up on uh, on stream for you guys so you can see it. Um, there's this like really creepy ghost lady that appears in the back of the car. She also follows me around and stuff too. But uh, but I think the best like image you get of her is definitely like in the car, kind of so to speak. She'd be whispering in your ear and stuff too, which is which is all kinds of creepy. Hmm. Not really sure if I can find it. You know what? Let's listen to the next podcast while we're waiting to see if I can find the evil ghost. How about that? <laughs> Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. Hey, I was able to find it. Sweet. Let's go back a little bit. Hello? Hello? Huh. There's nobody at the check-in desk. Okay. Here I am at the Harbinger Motel. Yep, that's its real name. To investigate Hackett Woods. I think I actually went past the woods on my way here, and I can totally believe it's haunted. Those trees are creepy AF, which is great because I'm here to find some hard evidence of the supernatural to show my co-host Anton the Unbeliever, who you may notice is not here 
Now, there may be some of you who miss his acerbic comments, so I'll do my best to give the illusion that he's still here with us. Just to be clear, he hasn't died. He's having meatloaf at his mom's, which I say vegan or vegan, I would never partake in. Not that I was invited. <clears throat> Hey, Grace, my name's Anton, and I don't believe in anything. I don't even like this podcast, even though you're super cool and awesome at ghosts and supernatural shit, and you're actually kind of pretty, and it's kind of weird that I've never mentioned that before, even when you sometimes straighten your hair. <sighs> Anton, please, I'm just like any other paranormal investigator out there, <laughs> okay? Are you playing footsie with me? I think I ship us. <clears throat> Welcome, listeners, to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal, coming to you from a motel near Hackett Woods, where I'll be investigating the legend of a local haunting. But there's no such thing as ghosts, because I'm Anton. And wait a minute, didn't we prove last episode that the dead body found in Hackett Woods was a hoax? Um, <clears throat> supposedly a hoax. And maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But even without the dead body, we've still got two missing hikers, creepy woods, an old rickety town, and a local legend of an angry ghost. So that sounds like a recipe for mystery. I mean... There's no smoke without fire, and there's no spectral plasma without ghosts. Oh, look, please ring for assistance. Hello? I I'd like to check in, please. Anyone there? I mean, spooky abandoned motel is totally my vibe, but like, I gotta check in to stay here. <laughs> Come on. Okay. So, <clears throat> listeners, after I get checked in, eventually, I want to get to the bottom of this ghost story. Who is this lady that haunts the woods? How did she die? What does she want? If she's a typical white lady ghost, I imagine she was murdered or... Oh, shoot, someone's coming. So the uh, motel that she's at is the place where okay, the guys, police officer tried to send us. I am officially checked in and in my room. It's pretty nice for a motel, basic, quaint, a little creepy, but like the door is not creaking and there's no flickering light bulb. The trees aren't knocking against the window with a tap, tap, tap. So yeah, room for improvement. Ooh, also check this out. The toilet has one of those pull down old timey chain flushy things, so that's pretty rad. Oh my God. And I spoke to the desk clerk about ghosts and he told me about this traveling sideshow that came here like six years ago or something and it caught fire and like everyone died. Grounds for a haunting? Uh, I think so. We could even be dealing with multiple spirits here. Also, the clerk was pretty weird. He just kept staring and smiling uncomfortably. Like, he didn't want to talk about it, but also he kind of did. I wonder if the fire has been hushed up. Either way, first thing in the morning, I'm going full investigation mode. I've got to find something concrete to bring back to Anton. Uh, I don't know, Grace. I'm not really a reasonable person, so even if you did have evidence, I'd probably just ignore it, even though I promise not to. Also, I'm probably dragging this whole thing out because I secretly have a crush on you, and I'm just making the most of my time with you. Um, okay, Anton, settle down there, you big goof. <laughs> Feelings mutual. All right, guys, sweet dreams. It's totally not the end. Morning, listeners. I am actually reporting to you from my very disheveled bed. I'm a very full-bodied thrashing sleeper. It's your girl, Grace, here, well-rested and ready for some ghost hunting. As for my night in the Harbinger Motel, it was annoyingly delightful. The bed was soft, not a peep from the floorboards. I slept like a log. I even tried to do Bloody Mary in the mirror, and honestly... I just kind of looked good. So, what's the deal? I mean, what is this motel even a harbinger of? Sweet dreams? <laughs> I actually did have a really good dream. Man, I'm starving. Let me see. Oh, yes! 
one peanut butter butter pop left. Breakfast of ghost hunting champions. Pop, pop, peanut butter, butter pops. Pop, pop, pop them in your mouth. <laughs> okay, so how come my brain saves space for a 15 year old jingle, but I can't remember my social security number? I mean, way to go, Grace. <gasps> if I reached out to the manufacturers, maybe they'd start making them again. You hear that, Butter Pops guys? Get off your asses and give me some free snacks. We'll give you free advertising, so it's a win-win. I just can't wait till I can hashtag add something. Hashtag spawn, that means you really made it. These really are addictive. Must be all the nutritious ingredients. Huh, no ingredient list. Mysterious, just the way I like it. Anyway, speaking of mysteries, today I'm going to look into this fire from six years ago. It was on private land owned by the same family who owns the woods, but the clerk couldn't, or who wouldn't, tell me anything about them. Apparently they're like recluses, which doesn't really make sense because they also run the summer camp we mentioned in previous episodes. Hackett's Quarry Summer Camp. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. According to the flyer on the front desk, empty right now, but it'll be swimming with kids soon, I imagine. Though I can't understand why a family of hermits would want a load of teens running around their land every summer. Oh, unless they're sacrificing them to ghosts of those who died in the fire as some kind of penance or death contract. Uh, Grace, that wouldn't work because I'm Anton and missing teenagers would definitely be investigated and what parents would keep sending their kids to a sacrificial ghost camp. <sighs> oh, Anton, why do you always have to be so logical? I wanted to call the camp, but I have zero service out here and the weird desk clerk pretended the landline was down. I think there's more to this family than he's letting on. So I'll be on the charm offensive tomorrow morning when I check out, see what I can squeeze out of him. But for now, I'm gonna swing by the local town. And once I've found out about this fire, I'll sneak into the woods to catch a ghost in the act. The act of doing ghostly things. You know, passing through walls, floating around with a general air of melancholy, that sort of thing. This is a really long one. You can actually see the progress on the, on the computer screen, even though it doesn't seem like it. OMG. I was right. The local ghost lady legend is based on the freak show fire. They call her the Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Oh, uh, uh, no way. The freak show fire was made up. I'm Anton and I don't believe in anything, even fire. I spoke to a few of the older townsfolk who told me jack shit, but then I spoke to the younger ones. Oh, uh, Grace, stop pestering children. You're going to get arrested. Um, stop interrupting, Anton. And they told me, actually, I'm sorry guys, but I've got to save this for the next episode with Anton. It's such a super awesome story. I'm just pumped that I came here and actually found a lead. And whether or not this hag has anything to do with the missing hikers and the potential dead body, I don't know, but something is going on and come sunset, I'm finding out what. Even if it takes me all night, I'm setting up a camp in the woods and catching me a hag. Hey, I'm here in Hackett Woods, in my little tent alone. Well, the outskirts of Hackett Woods, it's a little scary. Like, I can't see anything. There's a shitload of fog and even my own breathing is freaking me out. Jesus, it would be so annoying if I got killed by a bear right now. Oh, I bet you'd love that, wouldn't you, Anton? <sighs> I kind of wish he was here. Don't tell him that though. Hey. If I die, I'm totally coming back as a ghost and haunting him. That'd settle it once and for... What the hell? Oh my God. I swear, I just heard someone outside my tent. God, why don't I have service? Is this how people die in movies? They go to haunted woods without cell service? Alone? I don't really like this. Uh, chill out, Grace. Ghosts aren't real. You're much more likely to be murdered by a half-starved hiker who will chop you up and feast on your bones. Um, thanks, Anton. That's reassuring. What was that? Did you hear that? 
Okay, a twig definitely just snapped right outside. Oh, I can't see shit with this flashlight. Bigfoot, is that you? I don't know if you listen to the podcast, but I've actually said some really complimentary stuff about you, like how I would actually totally have a drink with you, even if you smelled really bad. Our friendly bear, Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Oh, oh man, it's just a stupid squirrel. Wait, it could be a ghost squirrel. Uh, no, no, just a regular squirrel. Shoot, but these vibes, man, it's weird. My dudes, I'm telling you, there's something in these woods and we are gonna find it eventually. Mark my words. You know what, screw this. I'm scared. Sorry, Hag of Hackett's Quarry, wherever you are, but I'll have to make the best of what I've got. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah. Last one, boys. What do you get if you combine a spooky forest, a traveling sideshow, and a big fire? Is this a joke? I don't know. Arthritis? No. What? Shut up. No. You get death, whispers in the woods, a lost baby boy, and revenge. I don't get it. Welcome to Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. I'm Grace. And I'm Anton. And together we strive to prove... Or disprove the presence of supernatural forces in real life true crime cases. Spoiler alert, we never will. That's a lie, and you know it. I am yet to be convinced that we share this world with ghouls and goblins. And that's how it works, folks. I investigate the unknown with an open mind and a thirst for truth. And Anton is a fun sponge. Hey. You started it. So, where are we with this? What's next? Let's get this over with. You could at least pretend to be interested. No, I am. I'm super interested. Ghost in the woods, let's do this. <sighs> okay. This is the story of the Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Ooh, scary. Did you come up with that? Deep in the wilderness of upstate New York lies a town with a population in the low hundreds. A quiet place that nobody really tends to visit, mainly because it's so remote and out of the way that nobody can find it on a map. A town called North Kill. Oh boy. No, I swear, that's its real name. Now. The Hag of Hackett's Quarry is a myth perpetuated by the locals of North Kill about the ghostly figure of a woman who haunts the surrounding woods and quarry, crying out for her lost boy. Why? What happened to him? Well, here's the thing. Nobody knows. As far as records go, there was no boy. Convenient. Ugh, I'm trying to set the scene. Okay. So this place, these woods, this is where those two hikers went missing, right, a while back? Has that got anything to do with this whole ghost thing? Well, yes and no. Forget about the ghost in the woods for a minute. Done. Can I interest you in a blazing fire that burned the traveling show to the ground? Toasty. I like it. So this is where it all started, allegedly. Harem Scarum, a traveling sideshow that set up shop in Hackett Woods. Wait, hold up. Traveling sideshows, is that still a thing? Uh, yeah, apparently. And this was before the hikers went missing? They're still looking for them, right? Yeah, still missing, but get this. There are rumors that those guys weren't hikers at all, but ghost hunters who went in search of answers and fell victim to the mercy of the hag of Hackett's quarry, never to be seen again. Like us. Except for the fell victim to the mercy of the blah, 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 blah part. We're, we're more like, um, ghost investigators. Spectre sleuths? Sure. So, what happened next? Well, according to reports from the local paper, the North Kill Gazette, some hay bales caught fire during the opening night, and that spread pretty quickly. Before they knew it, the whole place was up in smoke, including the show's leading lady and her alleged 
baby boy. Baby? Yes, honey? Boo, you know what I mean. It doesn't say the kid's age. The rumors floating around say that he was one of her freaks. Can you say freaks? A attractions? Exhibits? Employees? Let's go with that. Well, anyway, this woman, whatever her name was, it wasn't published, at least not that I've seen. She took a liking to this child, adopted him as her own. But he was in the show? What was his thing? Silas the dog boy, according to the posters. So, like, a feral child, I guess? That's fucked up, that she'd parade him around like that? Yeah, and it gets more fucked up. He was thought lost in the fire, so she burned two whilst she searched for him in the wreckage. And was he lost in the fire? Only her body was recovered, along with the old North Kill Sheriff and some visitors. No sign of the boy. <sighs> That's fucking rad. Uh... Oh, but yeah, sucks about the whole people dying thing. That's cold. I'm sorry, but you're the one trying to make it about ghosts and shit. Right. Speaking of, this is where the reports come in. People claim to hear the sound of burning trees and the pained, yearning whispers of the woman as she still to this day searches for her boy stuck between this life and the next. Has it ever occurred to you that it could just be a rumor made up by the landowners to scare people away from starting fires in their woods? Sure, but that's why they have private property signs. There's a summer camp nearby, so I doubt they'd want to scare the kids too bad. I don't know. That's kind of what summer camp is for, right? I don't know. I never went. You never went to camp? No. My mom thought it'd be better if I spent my summers working so I could get some good experience and land a successful career. Like presenting a podcast about things that don't exist? You're mean. You're mean today. I'm sorry. I actually love doing this. I may not believe in the spooky shit, but I think we work well together, comically speaking. Comically speaking, yeah, we do. Mm. Okay, so, what else? Scare me. Freak my shit out. Okay, so, as you know, I ventured out to Hackett Woods last weekend. You did? Yes, I told you this. You never listen! Right. Yes. You stayed at some hilariously named motel? The Harbinger Motel. <laughs> That's it. You can't make this stuff up. Well, you can. So I stayed there, and one night I decided to go into the woods. Now, I didn't see jack shit. There was, like, no moon and I only had a small flashlight. But I did record what I heard. Shall I play it? Go nuts, buddy. Okay. Here goes. Did you hear it? Hear what? Exactly! Nothing, huh? Yeah, a big steaming and pile of nada. But maybe she just doesn't want to be found, you know? What kind of ghost is like, oh, hell yeah, bring me the mic, this is my moment. Maybe she knows exactly how to hide from those she doesn't want to see her. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe your mom should have let you go to summer camp, then at least you'd recognize when a ghost story is just a story. So that's it. That's all I got. For real? No, like, photos or anything? Nope. Dang it, I was this close to believing. For real? Psych, nah, sorry, it just sounds like a freak accident to me. Pun not intended. Okay, well, that's us. The Hag of Hackett's Quarry. Bizarre, but not bona fide. Not yet, anyway. Wait, what do you mean, not yet? I don't know. I just have a feeling. I feel like we're not done here. I am. I'm done here. Thanks for listening, bona fiders. Um, what was that? New new pet name for our listeners? Bona fiders? Sure. I just thought I'd try it out. Thoughts? Okay, back to the drawing board. I think that's for the best. See you next time, folks. Peace out. Still not done. Pop, pop, peanut butter, butter, pop, pop, pop them in your mouth, pop. Okay, so we did actually learn some very interesting information. So the hag of Hackett Quarry is the, the mother of Silas the Wolf Boy. Silas the Wolf Boy is the first werewolf, okay? So what happened, according to um, the story that I was able to piece together, is that the Hackett family, at some point or another, um, maybe they got drunk, maybe they're idiots, maybe they're little kids and they were stupid, but basically they went there and they lit the traveling, uh, show on fire. Uh, when they lit the traveling show on fire, 
they were the ones that were responsible essentially for killing the original sheriff and also the mother of Silas the Wolf Boy. The mother of Silas the Wolf Boy became a ghost and basically started haunting the place. Um, Silas the Wolf Boy went out and started attacking people, turning them into werewolves, which is, you know, not cool. And um, it's, I think it's pretty clear that, uh, that, you know, we ended up in a very crazy kind of a situation because obviously we've got werewolves now all over the place. The Hackets are responsible for basically causing the entire curse in the first place. And so, like, all the Hackets dying and getting put in jail and stuff like that was actually kind of what they deserved. But at the same time, Travis was trying to cure it by killing Silas. Um, and at one point during the uh, the game, you know, the Hag of Hackets, Corey, essentially comes to me and is like, you know, Silas can't die. He's my, she, he's my boy. You know, something along the lines like that. So she's the one that kept Silas alive. Um, I'm not really sure, like... If I went back through the game, would I be able to make the right choices to uh, to save things? It would be interesting to see um, if you could do like a Hackett playthrough, which is where you basically save all the Hackets and you kill Silas instead. It would be interesting. It does seem like, though, the Hag of Hackett's quarry does not want you to kill Silas. And, uh, and I'm assuming something crazy goes on there if you end up killing Silas instead of, um, you know, going at the route that I did, which was basically to... Uh, to kill the one who, the werewolf who's controlling us all, essentially. Uh, I didn't end up killing Chris, which was interesting. I kind of thought Chris would end up dying, but Chris ended up going to jail. So there's that, and I have a chinchilla hat. You guys you guys uh, don't know about chinchilla hats, do you? This is a chinchilla hat. I hope you guys are, are aware. It's very warm. It's very fluffy. Okay, keeps you, keeps you nice and warm in the winter. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, I think we're done with this game, unless I want to go through another playthrough. Um, it could be interesting to try and find, like, some other, you know, uh, endings. But uh, I think we're done for now. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when it's a horror game. And uh, don't turn into a werewolf.